Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guests, but we want to acknowledge our podcast sponsors, uh, excuse me, podcast partners, uh, We Coach and the Global Community of Women in High School Sports, two great organizations. You really need to check them out. That's We Coach and the Global Community of Women in High School Sports. Now, let's hear from our sponsors. We want to thank Sideline Interactive for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and check out their indoor scoring tables and video boards. These not only generate income for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and set up a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action, or email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com to see exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Vital Signs Wall of Fame. If you're looking for a really cool way to display your school's school record boards for all your teams and all the sports or to display your school's Hall of Fame, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com and check out their touchscreen consoles and templates that help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Let them help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com to get started. We also want to say thanks to Final Forms. They're the industry leader in forms and registration, but there's so much more. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility. And they have reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that come when you have an athlete in the house. Final Forms can also help your coaches with things like attendance and communication and even help with their own certification management. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help with scheduling, with rosters, with eligibility, and all the reports that come across your desk. You know, it's time that you talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com and see how athletic directors are creating world-class marketing content for their school social media channels. You can do it in seconds on any device and you don't need any design experience. It's so easy. Even I can do it. Go to gipper.com. Tell them you heard about it on the podcast and use the podcast code ADPOD10. That's ADPOD10 and get 10% off. Gipper.com. Start creating custom branded content for your school's social media channel. We also want to thank Huddle. Go to huddle.com and see th that Huddle is how the world sees sports. Over 200,000 teams across 40 different sports use Huddle to help their athletes play better using video analytics and data. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years, but as an athletic director, we were a Huddle school. And our coaches just love the smart cameras, the mobile uh, apps. Yeah, of course, they love the analytics and the data, but there's so much more. Huddle has a professional grade solution for your program, whether you're a club or youth coach, a high school or college coach, or even a professional coach. Huddle can help you out. At Huddle, we believe in sports and teams believe in Huddle. Join the 6 million users. Go to huddle.com and turn your school into a Huddle school. That's huddle.com. We also want to say thanks to SnapRaise. Go to snapraise.com and see how their fundraising platform can help you in your program. Our coaches use SnapRaise, and it was just fantastic. It was easy. There's no upfront cost. Uh, there's no um, inventory or data. As an athletic director, I knew what was going on, but I didn't have to be involved. And what's more important, it works. If you go to snapraise.com, you can check out the thousands and thousands of dollars that they've helped programs just like yours raise using SnapRaise. That's snapraise.com. Choosing the best fundraiser for you and your program is critical, and you can change your fundraising game plan with SnapRaise. 
We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Go to hometownticketing.com. They're going to show you how to sell your tickets online. They'll show you how to scan the attendees that come to your games and collect your revenue. And every step of the way, you'll have a dedicated client success manager that's providing hands-on support. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com. They'll also show you how to set up and sell tickets digitally for things like school dances, uh, theater productions, music concerts, even graduation. Go to hometownticketing.com and start selling your tickets digitally. That's hometownticketing.com. And we want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director's Toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic Surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. At our school, we use surveys for just about everything, for teachers, for coaches, for kids, even for parents. And the information that came back was almost always over-the-top positive, and it'll be the same for you. And surveys also give that squeaky wheel parent uh, an opportunity to vent, and sometimes they'll share a small problem that you can address and keep it from turning into a big problem because you didn't know about it because you didn't do a survey. Go to athleticsurveys.com or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Go to athleticsurveys.com and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. We've got a really special guest today, a good friend, longtime athletic director, and also a podcast brother. Uh, our guest today is Jim Wright. Jim's a certified master athletic administrator, longtime AD in the state of New York, and he is the um, coordinator, the state coordinator for both LTI and certification for the state of New York. He also has a very cool podcast, actually kind of two podcasts, uh, the AD Vantage Point uh, and also his three minute AD. We're going to let him talk about those later on. But Jim Wright, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Jake. Great to be here. Um, I've so wanted to be on this podcast for a long time and you finally uh, grabbed me. So I'm I'm excited. Oh, my goodness. And and again, you know, if you're new to the world of AD, you know, Jim uh, has been around for a long time, a good friend, state coordinator. You know, I'd see him every year in Indianapolis or at Nationals. And, you know, shame on me for, you know, not getting him on the, the podcast sooner. So uh, we're glad to have you today. Uh, Jim, as you know, we always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So give us that um that three minute bio you've been doing this for a long time. So three minutes might not do it justice, but maybe take us up through the, uh, the college years and then we'll take a break and then we'll come back and we'll hear about your career in New York. So what's the, uh, the Jim Wright origin story. <laughs> the college years are interesting. I, um, I like to say that college, my undergraduate was the best 10 years of my life. Um, I took a, uh, I took a little sidetrack to California. I worked out in California for five years uh, for Lockheed aircraft thinking I was going to be an engineer and uh, that didn't work out. So I came back home, finished my undergraduate at CW post a degree in physical education. Um, jobs just weren't available. And I reached out into the, uh, the private world. I actually coached at CW post starting 1983 to 1992. I was the defensive line coach there. Uh, for those years. And I was also the head softball coach during those years, still looking for a job in education, which really at that time, recession and everything else wasn't good. I went to work in construction, fell through a scaffold and uh, tried to get back into education because I was out of, out of work. I did a master's degree at CW post as well, while I was still coaching there. And um, again, nothing there. Uh, my master's is in reading education, figuring I'd have that little, uh, edge to get into maybe elementary ed or something like that. It just wasn't happening. Um, so I went from there to Wall Street. <laughs> and I was on Wall Street for seven years with uh, Raymond James organization and uh, up here in New York and um, got tired of that. And somebody offered me an AD job at uh, my old high school. I went to St. Dominic High School, home of Rick Patino um, back in the day. And uh yeah, I said I left Wall Street for a $40,000 a year job as an athletic director. And um, 
as luck would have it, there was openings in the public school system a couple of years later. And I went out back to CW Post again and did my uh, administrative degree and um, got a job in the South Huntington School District and spent the next 20 years there. And um, best 20 years of my life, you know, it's very fortunate. During that time, I finished my doctorate at uh, Dowling College. I switched from Post to Dowling because it was a, a very, very good program. Got that in 2011. And then um, last year decided, you know, it's it's getting a little late in the game. I said, I need some, uh, need a younger person to come in and take my place. And I retired from uh, South Huntington. They kept me on as a consultant. I'm right now working as a uh, consultant through my uh, my business. And I'm a facilities and transportation consultant, as well as athletics if, if needed. So that's it in a nutshell. It's an interesting life I've had. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I didn't know all of those pieces. That's very cool. Um, you know, I, I'm going to guess that there's um, experiences or lessons, whatever you want to label them, from your Wall Street days that probably came into play a little bit as an athletic administrator. Um, anything stick out for you? Just the just the business aspect of working in and with private businesses, also connections with clients. I was a uh, I was an account manager. So it was really, you know, you start out cold calling and you start to learn how to be a salesperson and actually promote a product. And, you know, in our job as athletic directors, we are in the customer service business. So I felt what better training than to deal with objection and overcoming objection and maybe getting into that, um, getting to yes on certain things is was helpful for me in going forward with my career in education. Because, I mean, education is obviously much different than the private sector. Um, when it comes to management and also the management of money, budgeting, things like that. It was very important to understand how money works. And um, it was, it was a big help to me going forward. Yeah. The, the sales aspect, I, I think it's something that doesn't get enough um, whatever publicity in our job, because we're selling our program to boosters, to parents, to kids, you know, trying to get kids to come out for the teams, you know, absolutely great stuff. For listeners, our guest today is Jim Wright, Dr. Jim Wright. He's a certified master athletic administrator, uh, currently retired, but still staying very busy as a consultant and the uh, head of uh, LTI and certification for the state of New York. We're going to take our first break, but we'll be back with some more. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Final Forms for their support. Final Forms is the industry leader in forms and registration, but there's so much more than that. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility. They have reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that come when you have an athlete in the house. Final Forms can also help your coaches with things like attendance and communication and even with their own certification management. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help with eligibility and rosters and all the forms that come across your desk. You know, it's time that you talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest is Jim Wright, Certified Master Athletic Administrator and the State Coordinator for New York. Uh, Jim, you and I have been doing this job for a long time, or we did the job for a long time. We're both recently retired. Um, I haven't asked this question for many, many episodes. So from your perspective, how has the job of the school-based athletic director changed since you first got involved? You know, we're of a similar age. So how, has, how have you seen the job change? I, definitely the number one thing is technology with, without a doubt, the use of technology. I mean, that's the obvious one. You know, we were, you know, I still have my, my uh, notepad from 1998 when I uh, got into being an AD, my little notepad written down with all phone numbers. I still have my Rolodex oh, yeah. hanging around. Why I haven't thrown it out, I don't know. But, you know, that that's the obvious one. The, and the one thing is that as an AD, you know, to be able to adapt to that as you go through, if you haven't done it yet, you really need to. Um, there's still some people out there that are still in the 19th century, forget the 20th and 21st century. So um, everybody talks about parent issues. They haven't changed. Expectations of parents were the same 
in the 90s as they are in the 2000s and the 2010s. Um, they have high expectations. Yes, maybe they have more access to administration than they've had in the past. Um, more superintendents are political than they were in the past. Uh, boards of education seem to rule the roost a little bit more. People get onto boards for that sole reason is to create an agenda for themselves, perhaps. Uh, we've also seen a change in the athletes. Uh, I'm not going to even speak about COVID and what COVID did, but we saw the athletes change. There was a, a bit of grit. And if your district's a little more blue collar than another, there was some grit in there that you dealt with. But as time changed and people started earning more money and changing jobs into more white collar jobs, we started to see that the athletes weren't necessarily as aggressive as they were and that they were starting to specialize. That was the major point that they were starting to specialize. And then the race to the top, which was supposed to be an educational based thing for schools ended up in athletics and the race to the top became how fast can I get my kid to a place where they can get a scholarship by playing on the outside all year round. And, and that's definitely caused a malaise in our participation numbers. You know, they, they're down, you know, we might be adding sports, but for what reason we don't have enough kids to fill the sports that we already have because they're specialized. So that's a dynamic that I, it, no matter what we say is going to be difficult to change. And, and if you had another minute on it, one of the reasons I say to people is when you and I were kids, Jake, if, if our parents had a second car or a color TV, or if you and I were wearing Chuck Taylors, we were it in the neighborhood. Now, everybody, doesn't matter where you are, they all have SUVs, they all have iPhone 14s now, they all have Jordans. So what's left for them to have status, and that's their child. And their child is their status symbol. And they live vicariously through that in order to get them to the next level. So those are my major changes that I've seen. Yeah, I, I think you're definitely spot on. Uh, I, I think the access, you talk about the parents, you know, the access that parents have. I, I tell the story. I had an okay high school career, uh, you know, football, basketball, and track. But uh, I do not recall, because I don't think there was, I don't recall a single conversation that my mom or dad ever had with one of my coaches, except maybe my senior year after a sports banquet, you know, Hey coach, thanks for, you know, coach my son. I mean, and that's just not the way it is anymore. You know, parents, uh, I, I guess I'll use the word entitled feel entitled to, you know, Hey coach, you know, you know, and, and let them know what they're thinking. But entitlement is entitlement's also trickled into the administration portion for us. There's a lack of athletic directors and you know, they feel that, you know, they're entitled to have a great job. And when they get there, it's not what they expected. They leave the job. And the turnover ratio in, in athletic directors today is similar to what superintendents are. It's kind of like the lifespan of an NFL running back. You know, we're looking at two to three years for a lot of ADs these days. So how do we change that? You know, and that's, that's going to be a work in progress for us. I mean, I have my ideas, of course, but, you know, it's, it, these changes are not good for these, you know, for the profession. Yeah, again, you're absolutely right. And again, looking back, you know, we're certainly dating uh, ourselves, you know, um, when we were in high school, you know, the successful coach eventually became the AD. And then after maybe a few years, that AD became the principal. Okay? And now you have so many administrators and, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of great administrators out there, but there's many more nowadays that didn't come that through that path and, and don't understand and don't appreciate the athletic experience and what it brings to the the life of a school. So definitely a lot of challenges out there. Appreciate you sharing that. Once again, for our listeners, our guest is Dr. Jim Wright. He's a certified master athletic administrator. He's the state coordinator for New York, also a very successful podcaster in his own right. We're going to hear about that soon. Please stay with us. We're going to take another quick break. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing for their support. Hometown is the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Go to hometownticketing.com. They're going to show you how to sell your tickets online. They'll show you how to scan your attendees and collect your revenue. That's certainly important. And every step of the way, you're going to have a dedicated client success manager that's providing hands-on support. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com. They'll also show you how to set up and uh, sell digital tickets for things like school dances, 
um, theater performances, music concerts, even graduation. Go to hometownticketing.com and start selling your tickets digitally. That's hometownticketing.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest is Jim Wright, Certified Master Athletic Administrator from New York. Jim, we always like to let our guests give uh, their mentors uh, a shout out. As you know, none of us get to where we're at on our own. Uh, the expression that I always use is, I still hear those voices in my head from my mentors. Uh, do you have any voices that you still hear? The, the one that's the one that's the number one in my life as an athletic director was Jack Foley. Uh, Dr. Jack Foley, who was, was in the NIAAA Hall of Fame, um, longtime AD in, in New York, but was such just such a wonderful man. And he got me involved in teaching LTI courses. I taught 501 and 502 with him for years uh, until his passing in 2010, unfortunately. Um, Jack was an inspiration to me from day one, where he took me kind of under his wing at an AD meeting. And we had some things in common. I have a I have a, a, a grand affection for professional wrestling for some reason. And um, Jack's son is Mick Foley, mankind. And so right away we connected on that end. And also he's a St. John's uh, University graduate, Jack. And I loved uh, the Redmen. I knew Lou Carnesecca um, for many, many years. But Jack was just that inspirational person that just loved everybody. You never heard him say a bad word about anybody. And he taught me how to be a professional in the association. And that's what led to my work with the NYS AAA and the NIAAA. Uh, other people that have made an impact in my life, Don Webster um, is, is another one that just gave me the desire to get to my CMAA. You know, Don was the LTI guy in, in, in my section on Long Island. And uh, he was that inspiration for me. And then the other inspiration comes from, and the people that mentor you are all the people that you work with, because we always get something from someone we're next to in some way, shape or form. I, you know, original thought is not necessarily our mantra. We, we tend to do quite well stealing things from other people and then molding it into ourselves. So, you know, I, I think mentoring is a term that's used for old teaching the young but it's also for the old teaching the old. And we're, we, we should always be lifelong learners in that respect. But the, those names, Jack and Don, um, it's so funny because they actually were ADs at the same school. Uh, when Jack retired, Don took over for him. I don't know if it was that school or not, but certainly those people were the most influential for me as mentors. Yeah, again, people who listen to the podcast, they hear me say this all the time, but it's so true. I just love listening to the stories and the the relationships and how they got started. Um, and you're absolutely right. Athletic directors, I think uh, maybe more so than any other profession uh, are great at uh, stealing uh, other great ideas, but I think they're probably the best too at acknowledging, Hey, I got this idea from, you know, I got this from Jim Wright. Okay? And uh, they, they, they love that, that cycle of, uh, of stealing and also attribution. So uh, very cool stuff. Um, I, I know that the, um, section one, uh, summer Institute is going through some changes. Um, are, are you going to continue to be involved, um, you know, with the section one moving forward? Well, I, my involvement with section one is, is limited to just being, being there as needed, uh, at the summer, uh, Institute, they, uh, Pete Chambo and Steve Young have been running that for many, 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 many years and doing a fantastic job. And the place that they were at is telling them that they can't be there anymore. So they're they're looking to get another place. And they I think they've already found one on Cape Cod. I've been an instructor there a couple of times. Uh, it's it's a just a great session. It's just heavy uh, pushing of the LTIs out. I think they do ten classes in a in a four day period. It's just amazing uh, to see the amount of people that want to get that professional development from them. And it's uh, but that's where we're at with the section one summer conference. Yeah. I, um, you know, and again, Pete's a great friend, uh, as you know, for years, uh, I actually took my final two courses, uh, to earn, uh, you know, or meet that requirement for my CMAA uh, at the section one, uh, 
uh, seminar. Great program. Uh, you know, everybody up there does a great job with that. Well, we're excited to see what changes uh, are in store at the, at the new location. Uh, once again, for our listeners, our guest today is Jim Wright. He's a certified master athletic administrator. He's the state coordinator for LTI and certification for New York. We're going to take another quick break. I know that's shocking, but we'll be right back with the uh, Educational AD podcast. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com and see how coaches and athletic directors are creating world-class marketing content for their school social media channels. You can do it in seconds on any device, and you don't need any design experience. It's so easy. Even I can do it. Go to gipper.com. Use the podcast code, that's ADPOD10, and get 10% off. You can start creating custom-branded content for your school's social media channel. That's Gipper.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Jim, as I've already said a couple of times, you and I you know, have been ADs for a long time, but we have a lot of uh, younger ADs, some new ADs listening, and I think it's important for them to hear about the journey that we take and that we want them to take with the NIAAA. So how did you first get involved with your state association and how did that lead to your NIAAA involvement? Well, we were fortunate in um, on Long Island in my section out in Suffolk County, uh, our membership was paid for. So right away you became a member of the NYSAAA and we were dual state. So it was also the NIAAA. And then you started to gain some knowledge, but it was really the conference attending my first conference that year, my first year as an AD in the public school, um, that got me interested and say, hey, this is this is pretty good. And then it became the challenge of taking LTI courses leading towards a certification. And if you you know you heard my career, it's kind of you know you jump from degree to degree, and then you say, oh, there's something else here at the end of the tunnel. Well, you want to learn a little bit more, so you can't get enough knowledge. And then it was volunteering for becoming a chapter rep. Uh, for our state association. And once there, you get to see the inner workings of it. Um, the volunteerism is obviously lacking today more than it was before. But once you saw that once you were in, you started to aspire to do different things within. And I was fortunate enough to be selected uh, to get into the presidential rotation of the association. And once out of there, I was uh, on the resolutions committee which I'm now on the resolutions committee for the NIAAA as well. They had an opening, you applied, um, started teaching LTIs on a more regular basis as I got my CAA, went and got the CMAA. So you got to teach a few more classes. And then five years ago, um, they created a position of associate executive director for the association, which I applied for. And I was fortunate enough to, to get that. So now I work for the association as the associate director in charge of, like you said before, state coordinator, LTI certification, and also uh, the creation of a program called AMPT, A-A-M-P-D, which is our aspiring AD mentoring and professional development program. And um, you just want to keep doing more. And that's, I don't know, maybe it's my obsession with it um, because it's, it's such a great group of people. And you look so forward to going to the meetings to listening to what people have to offer and what direction we want to take the association into. The NIAAA, on the other hand, I, I'm on the national faculty for 707. Um, and as I said before, on the resolutions committee, I presented at the national, which is a daunting thing. All of a sudden you're talking in front of three or 400 people about something that you think you know about and trying to teach people something about it. It's, it's just been a great experience. Uh, I, and I love meeting people from throughout the country. I've started going to other conferences uh, lately to see what they do, that what we can do to make it better in New York. And again, stealing the good stuff from everybody else. So um, that's that's really where I've been and why the involvement was so good for me. And I, you know, I'm fortunate to have a family that understood that I had to do these things. Um, this is what I personally needed to do. And uh, they're right there along with me. So without their support, I wouldn't be able to do any of these things. Oh, no, absolutely. And, um, you know, I for our listeners, uh, you know, I was presenting at the North Carolina conference uh, last spring. And who should I run into? But uh, Jim Wright, you know, from New York, you know, checking out things. Um, you hit on a couple of key points. I think number one was, you know, attending 
the conference, you know, getting out of your office, getting off campus and going out there. And then the second part, you know, volunteering, uh, you know, hey, I'd like to be on this committee or, you know, hey, do you need need some help? You know, you that those CMA letters don't just magically approve you know, that national faculty just doesn't happen. OK, you've got to get out of your comfort zone, stretch yourself, volunteer, introduce yourself to committee members and faculty members, uh, because, um, you know, Jim, you'll back me up on this. Every state association and the NIAAA, they're looking for people to get involved. Okay, and, sure. and you can be that next one. It definitely can be. And, you know, the other thing we worry about, too, is the, you know, the impression that there might be a good old boys club there or good old person's club, you know, in today's world, and, and that they can't get in and they lament that we don't have access. Well, there is access and the access has to be discussion. You make an overture that you want to be involved. We're going to find a way to put you to work. We're going to have you do something for us, whether it's teaching a class, sitting on a committee, uh, writing a, an article, there's, there's work to be done and it can be done by anybody. Um, it's not a free lunch. You know, it might look like you get a free lunch, because you do get a free lunch when you go as one of the committee members, but it's, it's not about the free lunch. It's about the work that's done before and after lunch. And that's, what's important. And that's why the associations throughout the country have to have that mantra going forward. You give them a free lunch, but you're going to have to work for it. Right. I mean, it, it's like that home game. People walk into the gym and they see everything running smoothly uh, they don't see what went into that, you know, the organization to get the the teams, the coaches, the kids, the fans, the officials, the concessions, you know, you name it. Um, all that stuff happens behind the scenes because there's people doing that work. And the same with your state or your national association. You know, those things just don't happen. There's volunteers every step of the way. And uh, you can be that next, you know, great volunteer. So. Get in touch with uh, your state association. Get in touch with the NIAAA. Uh, get in touch with us. You know, we'll help you. Uh, uh, Jim and I can help put you in touch with the people in your state. So uh, once again, our guest today is Jim Wright. We're going to take another quick break, but we'll be back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Huddle for their support. Go to Huddle.com. Huddle is how the world sees sports, and over 200,000 teams across 40 different sports are using Huddle to help their athletes play better using video and analytics. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years, but as an athletic director, our school was a Huddle school, and our coaches just loved the smart cameras, the mobile apps. Uh, of course, they love the analytics, but there's so much more. Huddle can help any program, whether it's a youth, a club, a high school or college, and even the pros are using Huddle to help their athletes perform better. Uh, Huddle has the complete solution at a professional grade level for your program. And if you go to Huddle.com, you can find out how your school can become a Huddle school. At Huddle, we believe in sports and teams believe in Huddle. Join the over 6 million users and become a Huddle School. That's Huddle.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Um, Jim, as you know, we've been doing um, our podcast now for a little over a couple of years, and we certainly weren't the first ones to do this, but um, it, it's really a, a great way to share information and what I've found to connect people. Um, our good friend, Hutch Hunter out in Utah, you know, has the UI AAA connection and there's several other podcasts uh, that um, are out there and they all do a great job. Uh, you, uh, I guess it's uh, fair to say you got bit by the podcast bug and you're not just doing one, you're doing two. So <coughs> share with our listeners a little bit about, you know, how that got started and some of the cool things that you found out from being um, a podcast provider. So it's interesting. We were at the uh, we were at the national ad hoc mentoring committee meeting back in 2019, and somebody mentioned Anchor FM as a way to do a podcast. So right away, I'm on my laptop looking at Anchor FM, and I actually opened it up and I started the microphone going while we were talking there. And I'm saying, "Wow, this is easy! Oh my God! You know what can I do with this?" <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I let it sit for a little bit, and then COVID came. And when COVID came, I was looking for something to do. And I said, I might as well just start a podcast and just start talking to people and interviewing 
people that are sitting home right now doing absolutely nothing, you know, basically. And it got a little political at times because when you're sitting in your office alone for a couple of months with no work to do, you start to get a little, uh, little goofy. So it, it did get a little political, not on the side of, it was more about let us play things. So we were, we were into the, you know, we, we want to play again. What is it going to take for us to play? Uh, how can we do that? But for the most part, it was, it was that. And then as certain subjects arose, like the lack of officials, we started gearing the podcast to that. And then it dropped off as times changed. You know, we're trying to resurrect it a little bit. It's not certainly not as, as um, organized as yours is Jake. I mean, that's the one, one thing I like about yours. You have set plans and everything else. And I said, if I do stop consulting, I'll definitely be able to do it on a more regular basis. But then we started doing these little three minute AD snippets and with the intention of you kind of lose certain audiences after a certain amount of time. So how can we keep their attention for a limited amount of time on a subject? So we started picking out little subjects to maybe give an AD an idea of something to be thoughtful about, whether it was technology, whether it was talking to your trainer, whether it was uh, volunteering, whether it was dealing with adversity. So like a three minute egg, you know, we can have a three minute AD and it could be done in three minutes. Some went a little longer, you know, a couple went a little shorter, but I do both of them on Zoom and record them on Zoom because you can upload directly into Anchor right now and it goes right to Spotify. It's perfect. And then these are all videos. So we have a YouTube channel as well. Uh, NYS AAA Inc. is our YouTube channel. And then of course, you know, like you and I do, we do all our postings on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and, and everything else. But the video portion of it, I think is enhanced it a little bit more than just doing the general podcast part. And I want to try to stay with that aspect of it, uh, but still post it up on Spotify and, and, uh, and uh, anchor. But yeah, it's been a, it's been a labor of love and um, I'm trying to get people to volunteer their little three minute AD snippets. That's been a little tough. Some people are camera shy, so it doesn't work as well. I've got some good backgrounds now. Thanks to Gipper, one of your sponsors. No, absolutely. Uh, you know, and I know the folks at Gipper love to hear that. Um, yeah, I, I agree 100%. I, I, the, the podcast has allowed, um, you know, my original plan was to just um, uh, feature athletic directors in Florida. I, I got this idea as I was becoming the, the president of our state association. As you know, if you, you do things long enough, it becomes your turn. It was my turn to be president. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I was on a podcast, the Hanging with the AD group, uh, Don Baker, Josh Matthews, great, great podcast out of Georgia. Um, and I said, hey, I think I could do this for our Florida ADs. And we'd done a few. And I got a call from another good friend, you know, Steve Throney. Uh, and he goes, Hey, can I be on the podcast? I've been listening. And it just floored me that anybody was actually listening. And, um, you know, we, we just went from there. So, uh, it, it's, it's great for me to, to be able to hear the stories. And as I said, you know, people don't tune in to hear me, they tune in to hear our guests like you. Um, but the connectivity, um, you know, we, I, I brag, I say, we do three things with our podcast. We let AD share their story. We let them brag on their school and we let them offer tips to other ADs. So I, I think those three things, uh, have been great for me, great fun for me. And uh, I love listening to yours. Um, yeah, again, the the brevity, I, I think, is is part of the appeal. But the content is all, always great. Uh, your AD Vantage, where you, it was actually a two-parter. You talked about it, the officials shortage. And it's spot on. It's not just a New York thing. It's a national thing. But here you are sharing it, bringing it to light, uh, and not just griping about it, but providing solutions and direction uh, for athletic directors. So, uh, so well done for you and, uh, you know, uh, keep up the good work. <laughs> well, thanks. There's an, there's an adage that I use quite a bit um, that says, I certainly don't have a solution, but I admire the problem. And that's what we tend to do. We tend to look at the problem like it's some elegant piece item that we just don't, can't figure out. And that's what we need to do more. We need to have solutions and work towards those solutions. No, absolutely. And I think athletic directors as a, um, as a breed um, are, 
wired for that finding solutions. Um, you know, don't come in and start griping about a problem. You know, we, we know if it's a problem, we know about it. Okay. How do we get better? You know, what's your idea? How do we move forward? Great, great stuff. For listeners, our guest is Jim Wright. He's a certified master athletic administrator. He's the state coordinator for New York for LTI and certification. Uh, also uh, has, I think, the best job. He's a consultant, so uh, he gets paid for his opinion. Uh, we're going to take another quick break, uh, but we'll be back. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Snap Raise for their support of the podcast. Go to snapraise.com and check out their fundraising platform and see how you can get away from the fundraising headaches of the past. Our coaches use Snap Raise in my school, and it was just fantastic. There was no selling. There's no inventory. Uh, it was easy to use. And what's more important, it actually works. Choosing the best fundraiser for you and your school is critical, and you can put the Snap Raise digital difference to work for you. Like I said, it's easy, it's safe, and it's effective. Go to snapraise.com and check out the thousands and thousands of dollars that they've helped schools just like yours raise using Snap Raise. Change your fundraising game plan and start a fundraiser that works for you. Go to snapraise.com and start raising. That's snapraise.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Jim, you and I were talking during the break, and you mentioned uh, something uh, that's kind of on your heart, uh, the Kara Lawson video. Uh, I think she's from Duke. Uh, share with our listeners about that. Yeah, you know, this came uh, this came up. Someone just sent me a link to a YouTube video uh, with Kara Lawson. I, I didn't really know who she was. I'd heard the name before. Um, she's the Duke women's basketball coach, and she's done quite a few. I think she was hired a couple of years ago. But she does quite a few videos, but this one struck me more. It's it's about, you know, the things in life that are hard, that, that we lament that things are hard for us. And the understanding she was trying to get to her team was that nothing gets easy ever. Um, you know, you, you wait to see, you know, what's going to happen. I just want to get through junior year and it's going to get easier. I want to get through senior year. It's going to get easier. I just want to get tenure. And it's going to get easier for me. That's what we say in administration here in New York. Just get me tenure and it's going to get easier. It doesn't get easier. And that's the whole point of this. The whole point of life is things aren't getting easier. And her key point was we're going to be judged on how we handle hard. How do we handle hard? And if we can handle hard, we're going to be successful. And she says that those that sit on the corner waiting for the easy bus to come, the easy bus never comes. And it, it was so impactful. And in two minutes and 50 seconds, it just hammered home to me that, yeah, I felt I want things to get easier. When I retired, I thought things would get easier. And no, it didn't get easier, not because I became a consultant, but it was another challenge. You know, so once you've had all these other challenges that we had, Jake, as ADs, you want another challenge. I don't know too many ADs that really go to the golf course when they're done, you know, that really just spend every day. There's a few and that's, but maybe that's not easy for them because they're not good golfers. You know, maybe it's hard every day for them to get up and go to the golf course. I don't know, but that just, if anybody takes a listen to that, I, I highly recommend it. Search it on YouTube, Carol Lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N Duke university. It's, I highly recommend it. It'll change you. Well, I'm certainly going to uh, check it out when we're done here. Kara Lawson, and you said uh, Duke University on YouTube. Um, as you were sharing that, it just kind of reminded me, you know, we're always quick as ADs or coaches to, you know, pick on, uh, you know, the bulldozer parent that tries to bulldoze all the challenges out of the way of their child. And we're saying, well, that's how they get better. That's how they improve through challenges. But we have to, you know, you know, use that same uh uh, prism on ourselves too, uh, that we need those challenges uh, to get better. Great stuff. Uh, Carol Lawson, uh, Duke university, uh, check that out on uh, YouTube folks. Uh, once again, our guest today is Jim Wright, certified master athletic administrator, longtime AD in the state of New York. We're going to take another break, but we'll be back. This is the educational AD podcast. We want to say thanks to sideline interactive for their support of the podcast. 
Go to sidelineinteractive.com and check out their indoor scoring tables and video boards. They not only raise money for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your athletes. Once, like I said, go to sidelineinteractive.com or you can email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. Check them out and see what their fantastic products can do for you at sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. If you're looking for a really cool way to display your school record boards for all the teams, for all the events, or to uh, showcase your Hall of Fame, go to Sideline Interactive, excuse me, go to uh, VitalSignsWallofFame.com. Okay? Their touchscreen video consoles uh, can help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Go to VitalSignsWallofFame.com. Let them help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments. You can also email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com to get started. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Jim, one of our uh, traditional questions that we've been asking almost since the podcast began has to do with the idea of coaching toughness. A um, hundred years ago, when when I was in high school, uh, our coaches would say things like, come on, you got to be tough. And we kind of knew what they meant and and we did it. Uh, since then, uh, we figured out much better ways to communicate with kids and, and, and to coach kids, which is absolutely spot on. But I still think that toughness is an important aspect of sport and of life. So here's my question. How can we help kids to develop toughness while also being sensitive to the very real social, emotional challenges that a Generation Z kid is experiencing that I never had to go through back in the 70s. Uh, do you have any advice for us? You know, it's I, I look back and I said to when we played Jake back in the, in the 70s, you know, late 60s, early 70s, and probably our coaches, some of them might be locked up today for some of the things they did to us in teaching us toughness. I can remember an assistant coach putting on a football helmet and saying, okay, Jim, we're going one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, <laughs> it wasn't pretty. Um, how do we teach toughness today? I think we just have to keep giving kids challenges, you know, whether they're physical challenges or mental challenges, just keep giving them challenges to overcome it. I'm not going to go back to what we talked about with Kara, of course, with hard, but that's a truism there. It's, it's getting people to understand that they have to overcome adversity in order to grow. And you'll see that come out in certain kids. I think a lot of it has to do, you know, there's entitlement. You know, the parents of these children right now are the entitled generation. These are the millennials having children now. So we're really rowing against the tide. The best thing that we can have in dealing with it is probably empathy towards them and, and maybe a nod of the head instead of a shake of the head when they're telling us their story. And then we can say what the expectation might be. But when you, I found that when you nod your head at people, when they're telling you what they can't do, I, I certainly get that. But in order for us to get to the next level, it's just not going to happen. So then comes that Stephen Covey win-win negotiation, where in order to get to that win-win, you're going to have to give a little to me, and then I'll give a little to you. And hopefully we can get to that point. This is, this is maybe aside from teaching toughness, it is the toughest thing that we have to deal with because it's a competition. You know, there's also a, a talk there about what's the difference between accomplishment and competition. You know, when you, when you run alone, you accomplish something. When you run against other people, you're competing against them. And you in essence compete against, you're not going to say you're competing against yourself when you run alone. No, you're not. You're just running for time. It's, it's the competition piece. So the more competition we can offer also would create that toughness. But we need the competition not to be so organized, perhaps, like it is with the travel teams and everything else. You know, when we played as kids, it made us tough. Otherwise, in the neighborhood, they didn't pick you, you know, they picked you last. Right. You know, when they threw the bat up and you caught it, and you put your hands up there to select teams. You didn't want to be the last kid picked. So you became tough. You learned how to overcome that adversity. 
now it's your parent advocating for you to overcome that adversity. So if we could just keep the parents off to the side for just a little bit and give us some time with the kids and not micromanage their lives, that would help us. Yeah, I, I think you brought up some really good points. And again, I, I love anytime somebody talks about win-win, our, our coaches, you know, <laughs> probably never uttered that phrase at all in their career. Uh, but you know, you mentioned empathy, you know, understanding where the kid's coming from. And you also talked about, you know, the expectation and explaining to kids, okay, well, this is what we mean by tough. This is what we need to do. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the competition versus accomplishment. Uh, I, I always hearken back to uh, my kids got me a t-shirt. It's the wide world of sports uh, logo. Uh, and that opening segment, the human drama of athletic competition. I still hear those uh, those words in my head. Yep. So uh, great, great stuff. Jim, this has just been so cool catching up with you. Um, uh, I didn't get to go to Indianapolis this year for the state coordinators, uh, but uh, you know, you and I have uh, you know known each other for a long time, but this has been a lot of fun. But we're not done yet. Uh, we always wrap up with our athletic director's toolbox. We're going to take a quick break and hear from Athletic Surveys, who sponsor this segment. But when we come back, we're going to find out what Jim Wright is going to put in his athletic director toolbox. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the athletic director toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic Surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. At my school, we use surveys for just about everything, for teachers, for coaches, for kids, even for parents. And the information that came back was almost always over the top positive, and it'll be the same for you. But surveys also allow that squeaky wheel parent to vent a little bit, and many times they're going to share a small problem that you can address and keep it from turning into a big problem because you didn't know about it, because you didn't do a survey. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the pros at athleticsurveys.com or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. Let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone. We've been visiting with Jim Wright, a certified master athletic administrator, a longtime AD for the state of New York and uh, still very active at the national level. Jim, uh, you know your way around the world of athletics, but right now I'm going to challenge you to send out a brand new athletic director on the very first job. But I'm only going to let you put three things in their toolbox. What three items are going to go in Jim Wright's athletic director toolbox? Well, the first one is, it's, it's really not one, it's really 14 of them. It's, it's the 14 duties we have as athletic administrators. And I'm only saying this because we teach it in 504. We talk about it as part of our mantra, but I thought we did it in our mentoring session yesterday with, with new ADs. And I said, you know, isn't this going to be a little repetitive? To myself and I said you know what it absolutely isn't repetitive and it's more important that it is repetitive that those 14 duties are on the back of your wall or on the side of your wall or on a tab on your computer that you have to look at those duties every day and remind yourself what it is and the second thing I'd say for the toolbox is to remind yourself that our first responsibility aside from those duties is to protect the district from vulnerability to litigation and liability you know, we have a tremendous responsibility to do that through our actions and within our departments and within our teams. And, you know, you could be a district AD with 25 schools or you could be the AD in a tiny school in upstate New York. It doesn't matter. You have those same responsibilities and those same actions can happen. And I think the third thing would be the volunteerism. Start learning how to volunteer. Get away from that three foot space, get outside that box. You know, uh, my friend Todd Galusio talks about the three foot space all the time, that that's where we get caught up in. It's our own little world. We own it and that's it. There's a greater world out there. You have to step outside that three foot square and start to do more things. 
I think it's so important to the student athletes that you do that. And it's not just shaking hands and getting your picture taken when the team does well. Um, visibility, is that the fourth thing? Do I have four things in the toolbox? You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody said visibility, but it's it's a different kind of visibility. It's you have to have that same demeanor for every single team and every single action you do. You can't show more love for football than you do for field hockey. You have to be that all-encompassing AD that everybody can go to. But I, I, I hope that's toolbox worthy, Jake. Um, but to me, it's it's just so important, so important that we do those things. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, all four of those. Um, and again, we've done over 300 interviews. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to hear some repeats. But, you know, the things that you just shared uh, are, were consistently shared during the last 45 minutes or so on these talking points. So obviously this comes from your heart. This comes from your experience. So, no, great stuff. And you and I have both hit on the importance of, you know, getting involved, you know, volunteering, getting out of that three foot space. I haven't heard that phrase before, but that's great. Uh, we didn't do this earlier. So I definitely want to do it now. If one of our listeners wants to reach out and pick your brain a little bit, um, how can they get in touch with Jim Wright? And then also, you know, give out the, um, the address again uh, for your podcast. Sure. Um, they can uh, they can DM me on Twitter. Um, it's either at Jim Wright 824 or at NYS AAA 6 is our Twitter. Uh, NYS AAA 6 is also Instagram, but you can DM me on that. Um, my email is JWRIGHT at SHUFSD.org, South Huntington Union Free School District, which I'm still kind of at doing the consulting. And um, just check out the AD Vantage Point on Spotify and uh, Anchor FM, as well as the Three Minute AD and the podcast on our YouTube channel, NYS AAA Inc. Jim Wright, Certified Master Athletic Administrator. Thanks so much for being on the podcast today and all the best moving forward. Thank you, Jay. I'm bucket list. You know, I got another thing checked off on my bucket list. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wow. Well, you're way too kind for that. Uh, let's make plans to connect uh, and I'll, I'll buy you a beverage uh, at Nashville. How's that sound? I'm a cheap date, Jake. So it's good. <laughs> Jim, thanks again for our listeners. Remember the Zoom recordings of all of our interviews get uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast uh, YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening today. Come back just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll see you next time. Once again, we appreciate you listening to the Educational AD Podcast. We do want to say thanks to our sponsors and to our partners. Our partners are the Global Community of Women in High School Sports. Go to globalcommunityofwomeninsports.org to see all the great things that they're doing for athletic directors, for coaches, uh, and for women. Uh, our other partner is We Coach. Go to wecoachsports.org. Check out all the resources that are available for your coaches, for you as an AD. That's wecoachsports.org. Thanks for listening to today's episode. We'll see you next time on the Educational AD Podcast.